Today, we'll be showcasing a historical dish that you should never try to cook yourself. This is an example of what you might receive if you're unfortunate enough to have to visit a soup kitchen 200 years ago. The recipe we're using comes from a pamphlet published in 1801, which described exactly how London's first soup kitchens were being run. The original recipe was intended to produce 100 gallons of soup, but we've adjusted the quantities to make around one litre. In the 1790s, war with France, mass migration, and a series of failed harvests had caused a severe food crisis across Britain. By using cheap ingredients and preparing food in huge quantities, soup kitchens seem to offer an attractive solution to the widespread hunger. At this time, the predominant belief was that poverty sprang from laziness and bad habits. Therefore, offering completely free charity was thought to discourage people from working. So, if you wanted soup, you'd still need to pay for it. The charity came in the form of a discount, with soup being served for around half the price it cost to produce. There were also worries about charity reaching the undeserving, so you'd need to be given a ticket to prove that you were truly in need and not just exploiting the system. Once you had your ticket, you'd have to wait in line for up to three hours before receiving a serving of food. But was it worth the wait? The recipe was clearly designed for mass production and requires no culinary knowledge or any specific skills. Boil water, add meat straight to this, Frying would give a better flavour, but it also required fat and would have made pans harder to wash. Boil until the meat is broken down, and then add split peas. After about two hours, add 20 grams of onions, pepper, and nine grams of salt. If you think that sounds like an obscene amount of salt, then you're absolutely correct. We can guess this might be an attempt to hide the flavour of the low quality meat that was used. The soup is then cooked until the meat and onion have completely broken down and you're left with a chunky greyish green mush. The serving here is not historically accurate. Early soup kitchens rarely had tables and also required you to bring your own container. But how did the soup taste? Well, disgusting. Unsurprisingly, this amount of salt is completely overpowering and it's hard to discern any other flavor in the soup. Boiling low quality beef with very little seasoning gives you an unpleasant, almost rotten tasting broth. But with so much salt, there is little flavor from the meat whatsoever, which may well be a good thing. It's worth mentioning the meat I used is likely much better quality than would have been used historically. The only good thing I can comment on is a slight peppery flavour. That really is it. Individually, none of the ingredients used here are particularly offensive, and this makes it hard to convey just how bad the soup tasted. But I promise, it really is foul, tasting like a unpleasant concoction of vaguely beefy seawater. Soups like this would have prevented people from starving, and obviously would have been preferable to no food at all. But early soup kitchens were incredibly dehumanizing, forcing the poorest people to receive a ticket and stand in line for several hours only to receive a bowl of sinewy saline slop. If you were going to eat this soup, you really would have to be desperate. But in early 19th century Britain, many people were. <laughs>